Well, there's a few reasons for this, and <laughs> it's a bit of a scissor stretcher, so I've warned you. <laughs> um, the reason why this actually happened is could be due to actually quite a number of reasons. Firstly, believe it or not, but glass actually is not a solid, nor is it a liquid. Technically, it's a morphic solid. What that basically means is around half of the molecules inside or the atoms inside of a um, piece of glass aren't actually completely formed into a solid. They're still, in fact, slightly liquid. Um, th this kind of means that when you put glass under an excessive amount of force, it absorbs it. That's probably the first reason why this actually works. The second reason is the way that you're actually holding the glass. I mean, let's say this is the glass used, right? See my two fingers inside of there? Well, if I go to hit that on something, my fingers, that tend to be something like a soft plastic or rubber, are actually absorbing most of the shock when I actually hit the, the brick. So all the shock that would initially actually break the glass is actually being absorbed by my hand, by uh, my hand. But having said that, I'm also using the hardness of the glass to transfer my energy straight into the brick and break the brick. Now, when I say energy, I'm actually n I'm not talking anything like chi or anything like that. The energy I'm talking about is inertia, and is actually a physical hitting energy. Like if I hit something. I'm putting energy into that. Um, so pretty much what, what you're doing when you're using a piece of glass or a glass um, cup is you're using it as a better way to transfer energy. Now this is where conditioning, and I'm going to touch on this subject, this is where conditioning actually does work. Because the harder material is, the easier it is for it to transfer energy. Does that make sense? So if, if I've if I, let's say, got a hammer, right, and I hit another piece of steel with a hammer, both of which will absorb it equally because they're both the same material, but if I hit a, a, a brick with a sledgehammer, the brick's going to break because the sledgehammer has a far higher tensile strength than the brick does. Now, believe it or not, the glass Theoretically, it actually should have a higher tensile strength, far higher tensile strength, than a brick does. So glass is actually stronger th than the brick that you're actually hitting with. This was on, on, on a brittle scale. I mean, a brick, regardless of its make, size, whatever, um, is nowhere near as strong, or it doesn't bend anywhere near as much glass can bend. Even though glass won't bend that much, it'll bend a lot more than a brick will. It's mainly because of actually how the molecules are, are set up. I mean, it, in, a, in a brick, it's, it's not actually a compound. It's not a single solid, it's a mix. It's a mix of all, um, all these, mostly steel car, and depends on what brick you're using, but it, it's a mixture of stuff and it's been set together. Now there is bonding, but the bonding is nothing like that of it in a glass container. The bonding in a glass container is one compound, it's one, it's one single mass. Um, so in comparison, the brittleness of a piece of glass to a brick, the brick is far, far more brittle. So pretty much all you're doing is you're finding a better way to transfer your energy into the glass. 